You know what needs to change You know what's wrong We gotta treat people the same We gotta get along Do you know the history Of the country where you stand Do you know how they treated The first people of the land Do a little research I know that it might hurt Open up your mind son Then come back we can rewrite Do a little research I know that it might hurt Open up your mind son Then come back we can rewrite Come back we can rewrite some key words that came out of that last session which that um yeah we talked about there's not one aboriginal thing you know the richness and diversity that makes up our community needs to be engaged respected and represented so all those different voices and people's journey has to be incorporate that connection and relationships to people to land to place to animals to storylines is critical and we've got to make sure that our research captures that research has to be safe and it's only the people who engage in that can really say whether they feel safe or not. So I think that's some really key themes that came out there. I'm going to invite um, uh, Heather Dantuan to come up. She's actually, she's been sitting there very patiently making some notes about the day. So I'll ask her to come up and just provide her reflections about um, the, our first sort of forum here. Because um, the uniqueness of Central Australia shouldn't be lost. And we don't want to fall into this trap of, you know, all Aboriginal people are the same. So hopefully today you are able to get an insight into the amazing, forward-thinking, innovative research that is done with and for community and, and they're driving that. So I'm going to hand it over to Heather uh, to, to provide her observations. And then after that, we're going to close down and you're more than welcome to stay for lunch. So from my perspective, thank you so much for being um, engaged and informed and participating and I really appreciate it. So thank you. So I'll hand it over to Heather. Oh, oh, thank you, Yvette. Um, it's been a great, um, a great session, actually, and it's been a privilege sitting at the back um, uh, taking notes. I don't want to sort of go through and summarise all of what's been presented. I think that's been wrapped up in the panel and Yvette's uh, reflections on each of those. But it, the, the nine presentations have been um, fantastic. I'll just start with some, some things that I'd really like to do. I'd like to thank... Chips McAnulty and Rebecca Bradley for just organising the day. You know, it's been fantastic. I know it's been a big week for <laughs> for them because this is the fourth this is the fourth day of a series of meetings with Cousin, and they've worked with a working group to work through all of that. So thank you very much, Eva. You've done a sterling job. I've really enjoyed watching you. And um, well, the Eagles have been knocked out anyway, so I don't care who wins actually. <laughs> Um, they've been, I think the, the title's been terrific. I just wanted to reflect back on, um, uh, first I'd like to thank Sheree Mack for the um, our acknowledgement. Welcome to country. Thank you very much. I think Graeme Dowling made some really important uh, comments. He said, like, this is about doing it our way. And he said, it's simple, but it's complicated. And I think that came out through all of the presentations. Um, the important thing is that it's all community driven and the theme underneath all of this is uh, changing the lands landscape of how we do research. Uh, there were so many things, there was some really helpful stuff, you know, really practical stuff that's being done. I think some really deep covering of health services and, and how they operate and the needs to have, you know, the need to have better indicators, more comprehensive indicators, not just about clinical indicators. The constant a thing about the workforce and um, the way they interact with Aboriginal people. I'm a bit over cultural awareness training, I'm sorry, um, but I think good manners, you don't need cultural awareness training for good manners. Um, and the deep, uh, you know, things that I saw as a nurse where you could get uh, interpreters for people who were Italian background and so on and so on. And in 2020, we're still struggling for appropriate interpreters in, um, in health services. That when translating things, 
into something like a tool for people to use, a lot of stuff can get lost in that and you can end up with some dangerous stuff coming out the other end. So some real deep work happening around communication uh, in both Central Australia and in the top end. And I think that joining forces, so we can do a whole a lot of things ho a whole lot better. It was terrific hearing about the Nutanjara Health Services and the research that's happening out there and just that, you know, out in those communities, those 11 communities with eight that are staffed, um, there are eight research projects going on out there. Four of them are from here, but just the logistics of managing that and, and uh, health services are putting a lot of resources into it and Congress we know is sort of like the exemplar, but that's years of work and a lot of, a lot of uh, commitment to that. Um, but, you know, strategic plans, putting in place uh, uh, research committees to vet research. I mean, th this is not straightforward stuff. And I think, I think it's a signal from the Aboriginal community is that we, we do know the value of research and we do need it, but it needs to be done the right way. So, and people are looking forward, I think, to using that tool, doing it the right way. And it'd be great if other services trial that. Um, <coughs> Managing uh, um, uh, complex uh, studies like HDLV1, and I think the comment um, made about Yasmin, um, that you made Yasmin about, this is the hardest project, and you're doing the hardest part of it, you know, and sometimes our mob get the hardest bit of a, the hardest project and are kind of put out there, and you're doing a great job. And I wanted to sort of thank all our, all the presenters, I particularly want to thank the Aboriginal presenters who stood up there and presented so brilliantly. I was so proud of you, you made me want to cry because I was so shy when I was... <laughs> um, so, um, you know, issues that have been with us for a long time, really high turnover rates. The turnover rates are still bad in the Kimberleys and were, you know, 30 years ago. And how do you turn that around? And, you know, changing that is not straightforward. Um, uh, people highlighted the importance of engaging the end user right from the, right from the beginning, and in most cases we're talking about the Aboriginal community, and probably in all cases, even when we're talking about health services, really the end user of the health services are the community. So um, the panel discussions I thought were really um, really terrific. People made comments like there was a sense of shifting control to the communities, and this is a long way to go before we get there. Um, we talked about language and I know one of our very senior leaders in health has said we don't we don't consult anymore you want to talk to us we negotiate and I like that comment about consultation versus negotiation and what does that mean kind of thing um, the deficit story came up yeah I think we're all sick of reading you know stories that start off with how bad Aboriginal health is and um, like it's been said we're sick to death of being sick to death so uh, flipping that so um, you know, changing the landscape to um, strength-based stories. Like someone said to me, people get up in the morning every day and every day is a battle and they get up the next day. So how do you, um, uh, you know, it's not that easy out there. I think the landscape's sort of changing here. I think, you know, what we see, it's all presented today was really solid. There were bits and pieces of like a jigsaw puzzle and I thought to me they look like this from the same picture and we need maybe more of it and scaling all of that up. Um, but we need to change the landscape outside of here. And I think Alex made the comment about, you know, we are seeing more Aboriginal uh, researchers out there who are on review panels and are getting really tough with what gets funded. So, um, and you can see that playing out, I think. Um, so we need our mob out there, you know, in the Canberra, in policy, on review panels, looking at papers, making comment about that. I know a researcher got a pushback on a pro, uh, on a paper that she'd submitted and I read it and I thought that was an Aboriginal review that made all those comments. Um, so <laughs> you could tell and I thought, and, and they were really important ones. I think throughout it all we highlighted community engagement was critical from the beginning. Um, relationships need to be really long term. They need to be on a foundation of trust. You need to maintain communication all the way through. So when you're dealing with difficult projects like HTLB1, that the community is not confused about where we're at with this. Is this an issue? It isn't it an issue and how is it being addressed? I like that term changing the rhythm. There is a sense of, you know, that rhythm about con consultation to negotiation. We need to change the rhythm in a, in a really positive way. Um, and certainly looking at funding 
strength-based models and not the deficit model. I think I hadn't heard that um, expression, researching up rather than researching down, so that was a new one for me. I thought it was just a, um, a really brilliant day, I want to say, in Congress for letting us use their training uh, centre for, um, for, for all of this week. Um, but Lorna asked me to say something really powerful <laughs> and that is about all of the partners who have Aboriginal people on staff to exposing them, including them, involving them, no matter where they're working um, in the actual research process. Because we had a meeting on Monday of Aboriginal researchers and they were all in that room working in research because they want to make a difference and they could see that research was a way to do that, even though they, we get frustrated with it, with where our place is and shifting the power. They were hanging in there because they want to see their kids lead a better life. So I might just ask Lorna to finish off with that <laughs> final comment. Um, I think you just need to um, look at how um, Aboriginal people are employed in institutions and organisations. That um, Remembering that we were once over-researched, so gently, gently would be the case, so that we ease people into research and then we ask them, well, how would you do this? It's just, you know, we start slowly and we start gently and then as they become more confident, then they become more involved in the, in the projects. But, yeah, giving an opportunity to have a say and being welcomed in that space, is it was really important to uh, start having a critical mass and uh, yeah, and then they branch off maybe into research or into other areas, but they learn to, to uh, take control because we have been over controlled. We've been told that we, you know, we've got to be quiet, we've got to sit in the back, all that kind of stuff. So we have to break through that ceiling. Thanks, Lorna, that was ter terrific. I just want to acknowledge um, Alex Brown and Carla Canuto. Um, who've come up from Adelaide, they're at Samri, but they're actually part of the Health Translation um, for South Australia, which is one of 10 of these ARAs here, we're one of them, and they drive the Indigenous Research Network, and we want to drive change through networks, so whether it's networks, local networks here that we had on Monday, or much bigger networks. Um, I'd like to thank people that have been um, uh, on Zoom all day. I really want to thank Ricky. He's hung out there for four days on Zoom. So thank you, Ricky. Big shout out to you, mate. In lockdown and, and all. <laughs> but I'd like to thank all of you. Thank you. So I think we deserve a round of uh, applause, really. Central formalities again, uh, the, the legwork was done by Chips and, and Beck and we really appreciate the presenters, the people who came on Zoom, the people who participated. Uh, I'm just thinking about uh, Kylene's picture again about the journey that we all take, you know, about the roots, how need that, they need to be deep, how the branches, how we need to have, you know, bring people along, how we need to create a canopy of a community of researchers. Um, for me, uh, research is about um, activism, uh, you know, I can't dance, I can't sing, I can't do a lot of things. So for me, my research is an activist approach and it's about making a difference and making sure that the people that we're doing for is actually you know, getting the things that they need. So thank you, everybody. Uh, there's lunch at the back um, and travel safely home. And thank you, Zoomers. You know who needs to go The intervention as a whole Rolling my people, we don't need your help. You know what's so messed up. Kids young as ten locked up. Stop controlling my people. We need to speak for ourselves. Do a little research. I know that it might hurt. Open up your mind, sir.